ladies and gentlemen, I am about to force feed you a truth sandwich. It is a proven scientific fact that trolls are the best race, and yet only 3% of World of Warcraft's player base actually play them. After much painstaking research, it was concluded that this is because 97% of WoW players are genetically incapable of handling just how awesome the troll is. Blizzard Entertainment realized that allowing trolls to share the same starting area as another, lesser race may unfairly intimidate those unfortunate players who could not muster the testicular fortitude to roll the best. And so, in the forthcoming Cataclysm expansion, Blizzard has forged a new home worthy of Azeroth's elite. This is the Darkspear Isle, and once you go troll, you never re-roll. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit of the WoW Podcast, Blue Please, on CynicalBrit.com. Welcome to the zone I really care about. This is the Troll Starting Zone. Brand new. It's called Darkspear Isle. Of course, these used to be the Echo Isles. They're still marked that way on the map. And this consists of level 1 to 5 content. I am playing a Troll Druid. Not that that really makes an awful lot of difference, because you won't get to see the new forms here anyway. I believe there's other videos that can show you that anyway. I'd prefer to show you some actual content as opposed to little visual trickery. Okay, this is the Darkspear Training Grounds, and we are sent into uh, the Training Ground in general to search for a few things, specifically our trainer, to learn the ways of troll combat, which I assume involves dancing and cool voodoo masks. And if it doesn't, then I want a new starting zone. You'll note a number of troll NPCs firing on various target dummies. They're pretty much all over the place. The whole theme of this is this is where they're training the brand new troll army. Our first task is fairly simple. It involves killing tiki targets. Nuke them down. There are six of them. I shall speed up because this is incredibly dull. One shouldn't really blame Blizzard for providing basic quests at the start. This for a new player is, hey, this is how you attack beat on some dummies and now you understand and then we're going to take you to fight some real mobs it's a perfectly reasonable introduction so i don't necessarily expect every quest in these brand new starting zones to be some wacky thing like the goblins because that would be ridiculous well there you go in this case what you've got is a very nice troll theme starting zone dancing troll there you go got a big mask got da voodoo all of this is very important for a real troll starting zone. And it's always nice to have something new that isn't the Valley of Trials. Basic pickup quest here, nothing to really worry about. They seem to have gone away from the whole idea of drop chance on quests like this. They've taken the model from Warhammer Online and various other newer games that says quite specifically, hey, you can just have it, no problem at all. Now you see there, we have an ongoing war. Indeed, the entire storyline of this particular island is based around a invasion by the Naga. And it comes to a very satisfying culmination at the end, that I can guarantee. Now, you've seen the Goblin and Worgen starting videos, and if you haven't, then I'd suggest you watch them over on my channel. And you might be a little disappointed with this particular starting zone in comparison. Bear in mind that... This zone is a very solid, entertaining, and informative zone for a new player to get started in. I don't know if it's going to shock and awe anyone that's rolling an alt, but those of you who have played Horde alts before will be very grateful to see something different, as opposed to the old Valley of Trials over and over again. It's nice to have a place to call our home, yes indeed. It's been so very, very long. And one has to wonder why we let those level 6 mobs have our island for so long. I cannot understand. Well, there you go. It's now been dealt with. Uh, thank God they've got rid of the random drop chance. That is something I will not miss at all. I remember some of the old Senjin quests where you were trying to get... Wasn't it the sticky mucus or something like that? Never dropped. Horrendous. Or was it eyeballs? Whatever the case... Some random horrible body part that never dropped off of the crabs. There are crabs in this island, I might add. But thankfully, funnily enough, the crab quest is the only optional quest. I think they put that in there deliberately. It's like, hey, yeah, you remember that uh, surf crawler's quest? 
well, we'll put it in again, but we're not going to make you do it because we know that it makes you homicidal. Okay. And this is the last piece of this little questing chain right here. You've got to go beat of a naga in the middle. So this is a perfect introduction to combat. Perhaps more so than the Goblin and Worgen starting areas, this seems to be designed with the absolute new player in mind, whereas Goblin and Worgen are designed for those who want to roll out. It makes perfect sense when you think about it. Those who are buying the game for the first time are going to be buying the game on its own, as opposed to the game with all of its expansions. So the Troll is going to be one of the races they have access to, and the Worgen and Goblin is not. So don't be surprised if you see the Undead, the Tauren, and the Orc, and all that kind of thing have simpler, more tutorial-style starting zones, as opposed to, hey, here's some wacky stuff that you haven't seen before, because we know that the starting levels of alts can be a little dull. We've got to go speak to a major lore character right here. Yes, indeed, you're about to get a little bit of a lorgasm if you're into this kind of thing, so I would strongly suggest that you pay attention. Personally, I was going hell yeah through this entire thing. Welcome to Vol'jin's home here on the Darkspear Isle. With his captain of the Watch, Moraki. Ah, uh, some nice Zul'Gurub gear on the back there. That's what I'm talking about. Classic. Humble, but befitting. Let's go talk to him. Now, obviously, this is major spoilers. If you're watching in high resolution, you should be able to read the text for yourself. If you're watching in low bandwidth mode, however, I'm going to read this for your benefit in a set of suitably terrible accents. Could be worse. Could be the Worgen female. Don't talk back to me, troll. You know who was left in charge here. Haven't you stopped to ask yourself why Thrall chose me instead of you? There be no question why, Garrosh. He gave you the title because you be Grom's son, and because the people be wanting a war hero. I think you'll be even more like your father than he thought, even without you having that demon blood. You are lucky that I don't gut you right here, whelp. You are foolish to think that you can speak to your war chief in such ways. You be no war chief of mine. You have not earned me respect, and I'll not be seeing the Horde destroyed by your foolish thirst for war. And what exactly do you think that you're going to do about it? Your threats are hollow. Go slink away with the rest of your kind to the slums. I will endure your filth in my throne room no longer. I know exactly what I'll be doing about it, son of hell scream. I'll watch and wait as your people slowly become aware of your ineptitude. And when the time comes that your failure is complete and your power is meaningless, I will be there to end your rule swiftly and silently. You will spend your rain glancing over your shoulder and fearing the shadows, for when the time comes and your blood be slowly draining out, you will know exactly who fired the arrow that pierced your heart. You have sealed your fate, troll, and you yours, war chief. No, I won't quit my day job. Don't worry about it. Major law stuff right there. Yes, indeed. Half of the reason they're over here is because Ogrimmar is no longer welcoming to the trolls. Grom Hellscream kicked them all out. And indeed, Vol'jin is thinking very seriously about quitting the Horde entirely. And certainly has some very murderous thoughts on his mind. You, to me, that seems entirely reasonable. We don't need him anyway. In the meantime, we have other things we need to concern ourselves with, so let's head out and grab something else. Now, we have to go to a different island, which takes a little bit of time. Thankfully, they have built some bridges, which make things somewhat easy. Oh, God, no. No pygmy surf crawlers! Stop it! Blizzard puts these in here specifically to troll us. I swear. Okay, talk to Mariah, and we need to go do some stuff with the raptors. So the raptors are currently in trouble. We've got our own little area whereby we breed raptors for, of course, war and riding around on. As it turns out, the Naga have been interfering with that process, and we have to do something about it. Here we go over one of the bridges to the other aisles, and what you'll notice behind us is an NPC that follows us throughout this series of quests. He seems very enthusiastic. He's like, hey, wait up! It's like that annoying guy, that sidekick. 
but it's kind of endearing in his own little way. Okay, we get a number of quests that we have to deal with here, all of which are tied into this mini storyline. So the Naga have been interfering with everything, and they have spread a plague into a pack of the raptors. We've got to go slay the infected raptors as sort of a mercy killing, rescue the babies, and then hunt down the person responsible and murder him in cold blood, which sounds perfectly fine to me. Vengeance is awesome. And that was Swiftclaw. We'll see him later. He is relevant, don't worry. Now, none of this is actually on this island, so we're going to have to make a move. Travel time, as you can see, isn't quite as ridiculous as it was in the Goblin Zone, but then again, we don't have a hot rod to ride around in, so that's fairly reasonable. Okay, I'll kill one of them. Just one? Bubble blast. There's a bit of nostalgia for you. Okay. Cross to the other area right here. So, we have this whistle that we have to blow when baby raptors are around. They'll start following us. We also have to kill these plague raptors right here. They have actually quite a nasty stacking debuff, but nothing you should really have to worry about. While you're out of combat at low levels, your health regenerates at a fairly obscene rate. So, downtime, food and water are a non-issue when you are below level 10. There we go. Three hatchlings rescued. I'll give you a little look at these in a minute. Just zoom in. They're very cute. Oh, isn't it precious? Isn't it going to eat your fingers? Run over here and sort everything out. Now, of course, me having my terrible sense of navigation didn't bother to check the map, so I didn't realize that the Naga we have to kill is actually just over to the right on a hill. I will spare you the pain of watching me run around like an idiot. Just going to finish this off right here. You'll notice... Oddly enough, you've got the Eclipse mechanic there, but it doesn't actually work. I doubt this is supposed to be in from the very start. You've got Lunar Eclipse and Solar Eclipse there that supposedly give damage buffs to nature and arcane spells. I'm fairly sure you don't get those from level 1 as a druid. I could be wrong, but there you go. Whatever the case, they give you a 0% buff right now, so I assume they're certainly not supposed to be in there. Bear in mind, of course, again... Blizzard is doing a proper beta here, and a lot of stuff is very broken indeed. This is not just a glorified marketing demo, although I'm sure that's part of it. Come here, little raptors. Yes, indeed. I shall forge an army of my own making, consisting entirely of these tiny little raptors. They'll never see them coming, and when they least expect it... Ah, yes. No toes for you. Okay, we're done here. I'm going to fade over because this is just me being a tad silly and missing out on the Naga, so magical editing technology activate. I swear this is probably the reason I never roll alts or quests, because I can never work out where I'm going. Now this guy is a bastard. He's been poisoning the meat. He's even got that little Zalazane mechanic right there that you remember from the original Echo Isles, and you are dead and by God, do you deserve it. Poisoning those raptors. What a bastard. Rest in pieces. Yes, Chibi Troll. Now let's get back to the island, so let's speed things up a little. The overall time spent in this zone, if you know what you're doing, you can get from 1 to 5 in about 30 minutes. The quests on this island will take you to pretty much exactly level 5 if you do the one optional pygmy crawler quest. I didn't, so I ended up a couple of blocks off of level 5 by the end of it. There we go. Take your gear. Again, they seem to have put in a little bit of effort to make the gear not look horrendous. Although... I appear to be wearing some kind of skin-tight leather jumpsuit, and I'm not sure that was the effect they were going for. Oh well, there is time. Okay, now we've got to capture Swiftclaw. This is pretty cool. I like this a lot. First, you've got to actually intercept the freaking bastard. He's all over the place. Come over here. How irritating. I am the best lassoist, evidently. Oh, God, it won't stop. Yes, indeed, you are off the rails on this crazy raptor. So, this raptor doesn't stop. You have to ride it all the way back to the pens. Of course, it involves me finding the pens. A suggestion for Blizzard for the real release of Cataclysm. 
Raptor GPS. Sat nav. You know you want it. Get the goblins to make it. Uh, actually, that's probably not the best of ideas. Those things tend to explode and, oh, I don't know, blow up islands. You can get the gnomes to do it. What do you mean we're at war with the gnomes? Really? I'm sorry, I just spent the last two years in a Care Bear expansion. I don't know what that means. Okay, you are going to take a nap. Thank you very much. You need some Ritalin. Calm down. Right. Okay, that's not dealt with. Okay, major combat is going to be starting fairly soon. This is the penultimate area. Now, we get to have a little bit of a raptor ride over to where we need to go. Obviously, in the ongoing war with the Naga, we need to strike a decisive blow, and the way to do that is to attack them in their base camp. So we're going to do that by riding on a raptor. This is an automated ride, and it's fairly quick, so nothing to really worry about. And once again, like that horse, those things can jump 20 feet in the air. Unbelievable. Rocket-powered raptors. It's goblin genetic engineering for you right there. Ride us through the ongoing battle and take us to where we need to go. Now, what I'm about to show you is a nice example of quests that synergize together. Now, there are other examples of this in earlier expansions and even in vanilla to some degree, but these quests, more so than anything, are a great example of two quests that go really well together, like peanut butter and chocolate. So the two quests you've got are No More Mercy, which involves killing those Naga, and this other one, which involves putting territorial fetishes all over the place, which are these masks. Now, you might think this doesn't make an awful lot of sense, but it does so on several levels. The first way is that all of the flags are in the same area as the mobs you need to kill. So that makes perfect sense and also isn't all that new. I mean, there's plenty of quests that do that, right? So why is this one different? Well, the masks aren't just for show. Allow me to demonstrate why. There you go. The masks have a pulsing AoE curse that drastically reduces the strength and stamina of each of the mobs that are within it. They also, upon placing, will aggro these otherwise neutral Naga if they happen to be within a certain radius. So the best way to do these quests together is to... Uh, place a mask, and then draw the Naga near the mask so that the curse goes off and suddenly their stamina gets cut in half. It's perfect. Maybe some of you don't think it's such a big deal, but personally I see it as a sign that Blizzard's quest design philosophy has matured and learned from its mistakes in the past. It's nice to have areas that make sense whereby you're given multiple tasks. In fact, I would love to see a lot more of that. Give us tasks that make sense together. I'd also like to point out, this zone is so much better than the old Valley of Trials because it's not a complete contrivance. The Valley of Trials was just ridiculous when you think about it. It's like, ah, you're a new guy. You must complete a series of contrived trials in order to progress to the next area. And could it be any more obvious that it was a tutorial? In this case, you start off as a uh, troll recruit, you quickly gain the respect of your fellow trolls, and you are enlisted into the ongoing war with the Naga in order to uh, save the Echo Isles. Those have always been about making you the hero, and they definitely do so at the end of this zone, I can tell you that for a fact. Okay, reaching the end of this bit, so I'm just going to teleport us back. There's no point in watching me run around for five minutes trying to work my way out of the cave. Thank you very much. Go away. Had quite enough of you. Ah, lovely sea air. Fantastic. Right, I'm going to hand this one in, and we are reaching the final encounter. You're going to be pretty surprised by what they put you up against. Okay. This is the final bit right here. You can tell because it gives you a bag. We have got to go speak to Vol'jin, who is in fact right here, and I walked straight past him, so... Wonders of editing technology. There you go, see? We're not lost, I know exactly where I am. I'm right here. This bit is lore relevant, so pay attention.
We'll have to bring back the terrible voice acting. Bear in mind that this is actually a boss. And that's the neat thing about it. A little bit of wrath gating here, although not as terrible. So I'm going to have to read this for those of you on low resolution. Brace yourselves. Yo you are foolish to come here, sea witch. You escaped our vengeance once, but the Darkspear tribe will not abide your trespass again. You are weak, Vol'jin, like your father was weak. Today I will finish what I started long ago. The Darkspear shall be wiped from existence. What are you going to do? Who else can voice act in Naga? Right, so this is actually a little bit of a raid boss going on right here. You have to hurt the manifestations of the Sea Witch, which will place a debuff on the Naga Queen, where she will take damage. It's called a Soul Burn. She'll cast Frostbolt at Vol'jin. She won't attack you, although she will attack the other people here. I don't know if you can really lose this, but it gives you a really cool sense of doing an actual dungeon boss. This is a much better design than the Wrathgate stuff, because here you actually have to do something in order for you guys to be successful. This is phase two. She freezes, and now she's drawing power from the braziers at the back and doing damage to our friends. So we're going to have to help out by stomping out the braziers, which will sever the links to her power. You can see she's actually draining Vol'jin right there. She ignored us for whatever reason, I don't know, because we're too puny. Perhaps. Now we'll get more of these manifestations coming in right here. So we do have to DPS them down. You don't really take an awful lot of damage. You can see the hips for like two. So it's fairly irrelevant. But whatever. The point is that this is neat. This is fun. This is cool scripted. This is a nice climax to a fairly good starting zone. Good bit of story in here. A little bit of lore for good measure. Grab the last of the manifestations, and you're going to want to watch what happens here, because this is actually a little bit heartbreaking. I'm going to enter phase two once again. Almost got her. At least you can actually do damage to her there. There, doing it once again. This time he escapes. So plucky. Annihilated. That's actually kind of upsetting, really. What did he ever do to deserve that? He was so enthusiastic about the whole thing. I must admit to feeling a little bit upset about that. But hey, it's a good quest. Nice to see even the tiniest bit of emotional engagement, even if it's trifling at best. There we go. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the troll starting area. Pretty much all of it. Ending with a bang right there. It's good stuff. Again, my assessment of it is it's just a nice piece of traditional starting area. It's much more polished than the Valley of Trials used to be. It's nice to have our own starting area. And they use just the right amount of scripted events to make it enjoyable. It's a nice piece of tutorial work. I think it will really help new players get into the game and show them various different aspects of it in a way that makes sense. So, yeah, there you go. A great success as far as I'm concerned with the Dark Spear Isle right here. My name has been Total Biscuit, and this has been a run-through of the Trolls starting area. But we're not quite done. Go speak to Vol'jin again. This is unfinished, which is why it is a horrendous tease. Because who the hell is that? Oh, yes. He needs to speak to Thrall. The problem is the cinematic isn't in yet. I was so disappointed. I'm standing around saying, Oh, Thrall, Thrall, awesome. Let's talk to Thrall. And we can't. <laughs> I'm afraid. It doesn't trigger. So, I suppose I will have to show you that in a future video when they actually bring it into the game. It's a nice tease, a nice bit of cliffhanger material there for you. I shall see you next time.